my parents talk about the fact that as a child, I was a very sensitive child in the sense that things struck me more than they may have struck others. And some people have described that ultimately as a curse. So I think there was something in my DNA to begin, but I just somehow would notice people who were in pain. It touched me. I couldn't, I couldn't separate myself from that. As I'm thinking about a career that I, I was trying to think of something that I could have the most impact. And I think it was, I, I remember making kind of a deal with God that, okay, maybe social work is being a pastor without the preaching. I got to meet Barry in 1971. He was kind of an idealistic young man then. And I think he's still idealistic, but he's a mature man. I knew him when he was working with New Americans, and I mean, Barry has always worked with people who have been um, working hard to secure their rights and to protect their rights, whether it's New Americans or youth, um, now his Head Start work, um, all of those things. I mean, that's been, uh, that's what he lived. And hearing this young African-American man tell his story, and, and every day I wake up in the morning and I look in the mirror, and at that point I'm thinking, yes, I wake up every morning and I look in the mirror. And, but at that point his experience diverged from mine. I look in the mirror and I see a black man looking back at me. And I think to that black man, what because of who you are are you going to experience today? And it's not positive things. What kinds of negative things am I going to experience today because of that face looking back at me? And that just gripped me incredibly because I had never looked at myself in the mirror thinking, okay, Barry, because of that white face looking back at me, what am I going to experience? I took, I took no consideration of what that white face might do for me in terms of the privilege that it provides me in this country. And I certainly never gave it a second thought that there would be some detriment to it. I worked with Barry in his work at Lutheran Social Service at Refugee Resettlement. I worked with him in healthy communities. Uh, I worked with him in the campaign. I've been involved with him at Head Start. In some ways, he's doing mission work in North Dakota to be working on human rights issues. And he gets that. But, you know, he keeps showing up every day and he keeps doing what's next. And he'll, you know, whether it's uh, fighting for people who have been wrongly imprisoned, um, you know, taking on the federal government, that's not a small task. But he does that because, you know, every day he looks in the mirror and he says, it's the right thing to do. I think Barry's impressive because he thinks in terms of systemic change and but when he engages with people he is able to be attentive to the story, the struggle, the cause of an individual and you can tell that his loyalty is with the people or the person he's present with at that time. I think a couple of things for Barry. I think he you know he comes from a you know a, a strong you know sort of farming background and a you know Scandinavian background where there is a real sense of equality and I think that's I think that's sort of where he gets his humility from you know knowing his his parents he's a great guy and I can't think of a you know a better father-in-law uh, better uh, grandfather other than, other than my own father for my kids uh, and he's just somebody that's anybody who meets him just knows that he's he's got a warm heart and a warm soul. I find that he's been able to sustain this belief in making the world better. He's had sort of this lasting impact on those of us who have, you know, been able to, to, to do some things in this arena as well. He, he's, he's sort of the, the pinnacle that you, you look to, and he does make those hard choices, and he does operate outside his comfort zone. Before coming to U.S., we had uh, this idea of this Barry Nelson, and so we had a very, you know, idealistic, really, idea of this generous person who's eager to take uh, in six people in his home, because that's what we thought. We didn't know he was the director of a refugee resettlement agency. We had a group of Sudanese that had come to the community, and um, 
they were really hoping to find drums so that they could do drumming and especially like in their churches they would they would drum and so Barry actually went out and collected dead cow hides and brought them to his garage and um, had this group of Sudanese men come out and tan these hides all winter long um, and make you know their actual cow hide um, musical instruments, drums, and I mean that that shows you how personally he got involved um, to actually go out and collect those um, dead cows. <laughs> he takes on issues that are really um, everlasting issues, you know, trying to solve issues that will probably be with us forever. Because I, I think I, I apologize to my daughter when she graduated from high school and I said, you know, I really, I wasn't always there for you. And she said, oh dad, don't worry about that. You've given me a lot more than just always being there. And then my son, at one point, they were supposed to write about a hero. And he wrote about me. And that was, you know, it's like, wow. There's the payback. I think Barry is loyal. Barry is authentic. Barry is spiritual. Strong. A leader. And he is a hard worker. And I would also agree, courageous. Barry is selfless. I think Barry is revolutionary. Barry's that crazy guy you see biking down the road. Uh, what drives a person is that that personal experience of seeing impact of, of what I have done or to note that maybe some part of the community or world is, is a little bit better because I, I had something to do with it. That's that's truly the the sincerest form of recognition.